Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video. Today I'm going to be going over the life cycle of stars. So, let's get straight into this. First of all, when stars form, they are brought together by gravity inside what we call a stellar nursery. So basically this is the remains of an old star which exploded long ago and gravity pulls some of this stuff together. So you can see they're clouds of gas. Gravity will pull the clouds of gas together until um, then we'll get something called a protostar. So let's quickly get that in, one of them here. So here we go. So let's go down here. Let's just quickly rename this protostar like this. So protostar. I think it's one word. Yeah, so there we go. We've got our protostar. So this is formed inside that giant cloud, like I just said. It's pulled together by gravity. But then. About 4.6 billion years later, it will eventually just get a lot larger and it will eventually turn into a main star. So, let's just quickly... What's a good example here? That star's too small, damn it. Yeah, so, it'll eventually become a normal star. So, here's our protostar. Then that will eventually become a proper star. So, it's releasing energy through nuclear fusion. And if you don't know what nuclear fusion is, that's basically elements inside the star, say like hydrogen, um, hydrogen elements. They collide into other hydrogen elements and make new elements. So one hydrogen plus another hydrogen, that will make a helium atom. And then these helium atoms will eventually go and collide with themselves and then make the next element on the periodic table, which I believe is lithium. And then lithium will collide and go up to the next number, which is element four. And then all those numbers will eventually go all the way up to iron, I think, which is number 25 on the periodic table. So I think Fe, number 25 on the periodic table. I think that's the right number. But anyways, it'll eventually go all the way up to iron because that's the max element that a star can produce. But then, here's the good stuff. So basically, enough of the nuclear fusion. So now we're going to go on to like the main sequence star. So after our protostar has formed, it's became a normal star. Then it's got bigger because it's continued getting more mass from the gas cloud it was formed in. We eventually get a main sequence star. So this is basically like the sun. It's a main sequence star, about 4 billion years old, 4.6 billion years old. Just burning its normal days. So basically this star is also yellow, but then as time goes on, it will eventually become what we know as a red giant. So it will be a lot star, a lot bigger. Actually, let's use, no, we don't use that, that's a hyper giant. Uh, in fact, let's just type in, um, yes, sun, because I know I have a special custom sun. So here we go, so we've got a red giant sun. So this is how big the sun will be. So right here, it will eventually become this. So let's quickly um, turn the temperature down because the red giant will obviously be red. So here we go. So as the star gets older, it's, um, it will eventually run out of hydrogen, and stars need hydrogen to live, so it will start burning off helium, because after hydrogen's run out, helium's the next, like, the next smallest element on the list, so it will start burning helium. And obviously helium, well, what do you use it for? You use it to make balloons. The star will get a lot bigger, because it's puffing up with more helium as the hydrogen runs out, and because the element is bigger than hydrogen as well, like, it has more electrons in it, I believe. I don't know the precise things, I haven't... I haven't gone to school in a long time, but yeah, there we go. So we eventually get a red giant star, and then a long time after the red giant, few um, yeah, a few another few billion years after it turns into a red giant, and it gets a little it get it gets a little bigger when it turns to a red giant. Like it still increases in size, but eventually it'll get to the point where it explodes like this. So it'll be another explosion like this. It'll explode like that, and then it will collapse down into what we call a white dwarf. So basically, this is just a um, this is the core of the star. So basically, all of the outer layers of the star have exploded into space. So that's basically like that explosion there. That's the outer layers of the star, and all that's left is the little core on the inside, which is the white dwarf and then eventually as time goes along this star will cool down in temperature like this so it's going to cool down it goes yellow then it will go orange then it will go red then it will go black so there we go so we lose red then it goes completely black as it goes to zero degrees celsius so then we get a black dwarf so there we go so let's call it black wait how do you spell dwarf uh, lf is that oh, i don't know Oops. sorry if my spelling wait well, i need to find out now wait why D-W-A-R-F, okay. D-W-A, ah, oh, it's an R instead of an L. Okay, so it's not that close off. Yeah, I know being the best at spelling, but there we go. So we've got our black dwarf now, and then this would be pretty much trillions of years. No, 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 not trillions. Millions of years after the white dwarf um, first appeared, it will eventually just cool down to this black dwarf, and it will just be complete darkness in any solar system which Seth happens. So if the gas giants survive the sun's explosion, which they probably will, they won't see anything in the sky at night when it, the black dwarf is there. They'll just be orbiting around a dead star. Because this is a dead star. That it's not producing energy anymore. And then, 
yeah, there you go, and eventually it'll probably get eaten up by a black hole trillions of years in the future for them, but there we go. So that's that. So that's the main sequence stage of a star, but also there's an alternative route stars can take. So if we go here, so this is the main sequence area, but from the protostar, if the protostar gets a lot bigger before it becomes a star, so this could be a larger protostar, so there we go. Okay, that's not what I wanted. Why have we got another supernova? Let's quickly delete that. Okay, wait. Uh, remove supernova, please. Please remove. Why is it not going away? So, yeah. Yeah, pretend you didn't see that. <sighs> Whoa, that's a lot. Wait, uh, this, here, this needs to go. Okay, so we've got a glitched out supernova. That's good to hear. Okay, now it's gone. Alright, there we go. We got rid of it. Alright, so, if we go back to the protostar, stars can also form with more mass. So, uh, it's gone all white. It's got too hot. But anyways, let's go to another star. So, Instead of becoming a main sequence star, which is this star here, wait, let's just put another one in because they have to fix that. Let's put another star in here, like that. Oh, I am back. Sorry about that quick um, cut there. I had a little issue. But anyways, so like I said, we put this star back here. So there we go. So that's our main sequence stage. But also, if stars form and they have a lot more mass in them, so they basically got more atoms packed in it, it will make a larger star. So here we go. And then eventually... It will, the same process will happen, just the star's a lot larger, but this time, instead of forming a red giant, it will form a red super giant. So here we go, so here's our red super giant here. So as you can see, it's a lot larger than our red giant star there, so let's call it, um, let's just call it super giant. So there we go. Okay, we've got our super giant now, and also let's put it to about the same temperature as that to make it go red. So, yeah, so here we've got our super giant. So basically, the only reason it's got bigger is because it has more mass in it, like I said. And that's pretty much it. But also there's another stage for stars that have even more mass when they form. You can also get a red hypergiant like this. So they're just a, a little larger, well not a little larger, a ton lot larger. So there we go. So let's make that red as well. So that's a hypergiant, but that's not relevant. So let's just quickly get rid of that. So we've got a supergiant here. And then eventually the same thing will happen with the supergiant where it will explode into another um, thing here. But yeah, this would be called a supernova. So when normal, when normal red giants explode, they explode in things called planetary nebulas. But when a super giant explodes, they become a supernova. Trust me, I don't know why they called it a different thing, even though it's pretty much the same process. But yeah, there you go, I guess. And then after the supernova happens, we will get what we call a, um, a neutron star, which is a tiny, very, very dense star. So it's basically a more dense, compact version of a white dwarf because it's been crushed down a lot more after the star's outer layers explode. So there we go. Or it will also form a black hole which is another alternative just depends on how large the star is so there we go so we either get a black hole so you can see there very nasty looking thing and the white dwarf or not a white dwarf neutron star which is this tiny little thing here which is only 12 kilometers in size or 13 kilometers in size so this thing is very small or radius anyway so as you can see if we put it next to earth earth is huge compared to this thing I don't know why earth is in darkness there but yeah earth is massive compared to this white um, or this um, neutron star. If we compare it to a white dwarf as well, there we go. White dwarf is a little larger than the Earth, but yeah, these neutron stars, because they're so dense and so compact, they form this tiny little thing. And these guys are very dangerous as well. Like right? these stars emit a lot of radiation. Any planets orbiting one of these would get completely destroyed. Because look at it, it has the mass of 1.48 suns, but it's it's smaller than the moon. It's smaller than like the Atlantic Ocean. And now see, we have the other alternative, which is a black hole. And basically, this is just a black hole, a very deadly thing, as you can see here. And it just sucks in everything. It gets too close. And yeah, there you go. That's the end process of a star. So hopefully. Um, you will enjoy this video. Hopefully I made sense and if you want me to do more of these like I guess educational vids like tell me what subject I should do it on like what what like do I tell you about like because I'm, I'm quite good with astronomy I've never been that good at explaining it on video, but yeah, I'm quite a good like I'm quite knowledgeable about astronomy Like if you, if you came up and spoke to me in real life I'd be able to explain a lot better than I would on this video, but yeah, there you go, I guess Yeah, cuz I've actually been I've spent 11 years on astronomy like since I was like a tiny little kid in school to now the age I am now, like, I've, I've been doing it a long time, but yeah, there we go, so hopefully, like I said, you will enjoy this video, leave a like and subscribe if you think like I should do more, tell me your comments down below, yeah, show me comments, I like to see comments more than that, like, subscribes and stuff like that, so, yeah, in the comments below, tell me like, how good am I, how can I improve, um, and also like, do you want me to do more, I guess, like more like vids where I teach you stuff, I don't know, but anyways, that will do it for the video, so yeah, like I said, have a good day, and I'll see you in the next video, Goodbye.
eventually become a normal star, so here's our proton star, then that will eventually become a proper star, so it's releasing energy through nuclear fusion. And if you don't know what nuclear fusion is, that's basically elements inside the star, say like hydrogen, um, hydrogen elements, they collide into other hydrogen elements and make... Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video. Today I'm going to be going over the life cycle of stars. So, all the clouds of gas together until um, then we'll get something called a protostar. So let's quickly get that in, one of them here, so here we go. So, let's go down here, let's just quickly rename this protostar like this. So, protostar, I think it's one word, yeah, so there we go, we've got our protostar. So this is formed inside that giant cloud like I just said, it's pulled together by gravity. But then, about 4.6 billion years later, it will eventually just get a lot larger and it will eventually turn into a main star. So, let's just quickly, what's a good example here? That star's too small, damn it. Yeah, so, let's get straight into this. First of all, when stars form, they are brought together by gravity inside what we call a stellar nursery. So, basically, this is the remains of an old star which exploded long ago and gravity pulls some of this stuff together. So, you can see, they're clouds of gas. Gravity will pull. 